Hey, Bolo Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right, you guys. It is time for a bread and butter Bolo video. Items that I sold on eBay for $35 or less. I picked these items up at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales, YouTube, and Facebook Marketplace. I've got 32 of them coming your way. Items that I bought low and sold for good profits. So we are going to get started here. I'm going to tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what I sold it for. And you guys, if you like bolo videos like this i have a ton um i also have big money bolos and i feature other people's bo bolos so check out the channel for more items to be on the lookout for all right you guys let's get started here the first item i sold is this patch um i this came from a thrift store it was in if i remember correctly it was with some um like uh, one of those sashes for Girl Scouts that had patches on it. And then there were some miscellaneous patches thrown in there. And this was one of them. This is a vintage patch, Sunshine Camp, Ohio, 1981. Um, it's a harder to find patch. I couldn't find anything like it. I ended up selling this for $11.52 and the buyer was all in for $18.81. All in means um, with tax and shipping. That was the total they paid for everything. The next item I sold is this vintage dollhouse Victorian style velvet sofa. Um, I got this at an estate sale. So I sold this one and I sold this little corner chair to the same person. They were all in for both of them for $39 and I think it's 60 cents um, for the two items before tax and shipping. After tax and shipping, it was $50.50. My cost of goods was um, 50 cents for this item and $5 for the other item, the sofa here, this couch or whatever it is. So I love selling dollhouse furniture. Super fun little uh, pickup there. Learn to draw vintage Disney books. These are Mickey Mouse. Um, got these at, I don't know. I didn't write it down and I can't recall. Maybe a garage sale. So super fun little item for kids to learn how to draw. This is from 1991, so it is vintage there. Ended up taking a best offer of 15 on these, and the buyer was all in for 2101. The next item is this vintage Longenberger pottery heart plate. Um, it is retired, and it is the pottery. I have a tendency, if I can get it cheap enough to pick up the pottery of Longenberger, it usually does pretty good for me. Um, I haven't sold a whole lot of baskets. Um, I did sell one that was like a Halloween theme. I have sold some of the basket liners, but they're typically long tail. Um, so I only recommend the basket liners if you can get them dirt cheap. Um, sold this uh, for $15.84. The buyer was all in for $28.14. And this came from a garage sale for $1. The next item is this Lauren G. Adams ring. Um, my husband picked up a bunch of jewelry from an estate sale and he brought it home and he was digging through it. And I grabbed like 15 items off the top and um, I just listed them for him because I know what's going to happen. He is going to look through it and he's going to sit it to the side and not list anything. And he's going to hang on to it for when he retires. So um, I figured I would help him out and I listed, I don't know, 15 things probably, but this sold really quick. It sold for $12 on best offer and the buyer was all in for $17.34. The next item is this Cranium Caribou Game Replacement Tray. So what I did, you guys, is I parted out a Caribou Game. Now, the Caribou Games on their own can be a big money bolo. I did a video about this over on my reseller testing bolo products. I highly recommend you go check it out. Um, I talk about this game as um, selling it complete. And then I also talk about how I parted it out and both ways are good, but definitely check it out. So you know how you can make the most money off of the game you find. This sold just the tray sold for $12 and 24 cents. The buyer was all in for 19 23. The next item that sold is this, Ooh, I don't know how to say this. Guloy, Guloy, Spain. It's a motorcycle and it's a BMW. This came out of a mystery toy box that I picked up from YouTube auction auctions for you. And I have her link down below. If you guys are looking for inventory, I highly recommend auctions for you and Donatella Bottolino. I purchased from them often 
And this was one of the items. If you want to see the other items I got in the box, you can search my channel for auctions for you. And I do unboxings whenever I buy from them. Uh, this sold for a best offer of $30. It was in a $100 mystery box. And the buyer was all in for $47.48. The next item I picked up in a thrift store mystery box. And it had some condition issues, some loose threads. It's a Cabbage Patch Kids doll carrier. So I went ahead and took $11 best offer on this. And the buyer was all in for $19.67. This vintage um, brooch, it is the initial K. I got this at a garage sale for 50 cents. This is a major bread and butter, you guys, but it sold pretty quickly, actually. I have one of these calipers that I use to show measurements. Um, I think it's a great idea because the buyer can actually see in the photo what it measures. So it saves you from having to go and measure it later or trying to use a tape measure that's not exact. So this is really great. And I got this on eBay and it was probably, I think it was like 10 or $12. So they're really, really cheap. Sold this brooch for $8. The buyer was all in for $13.98. The next item that sold is this vintage Avon Elephant Fragrance Glace. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know these are flying out of my store. Um, I got these at a thrift store for 50 cents each. I got a whole bunch of them and I sold this one for $18. The buyer was all in for $24.90. The next item I sold is this vintage Coca-Cola puffy stickers. These were a garage sale pickup. I got a whole bunch of stickers in a baggie for, I think it was two or three bucks. I have a unboxing on my Sourcing with Bolo Buddies YouTube channel. If you want to check it out, if you like vintage stickers, pretty cool video. Um, I ended up selling these for $10.50 and the buyer was all in for $16.64. The next item is this vintage FOE Fraternal Order of Eagles Turtle Pendant. And I got this at a garage sale. I did a bulk buy. I bought all of the jewelry at this sale. And I sold this one piece for $19. The buyer was all in for $25.58. The next item is this Connect Screaming Serpent Roller Coaster. This is the second one that I have parted out. It is a lot of work. Um, do I recommend it? I don't know because... I say yes, but then I start parting it out and like uh, separating all the pieces. And you guys, it is a ton of work, but um, you could always just pull out like the main pieces like this and um, the people, which the people didn't come with this one. That's why I parted it out. If it is complete, definitely sell it complete. But um, if not, part it out. Um, I sold this for $25.20. The buyer was all in for $34.23. This came from the Goodwill. It was in a big tote with all the pieces all mixed up, but again, it was not complete. Uh, this is a little Tolo First Friends Lion children's toy. It's a little posable toy. Um, I got this in a thrift store mystery box and I sold this for $9. The buyer was all in for $15.43. The next item I sold is this vintage 1999 Winnie the Pooh flag. And this came from a garage sale. I can't remember what I paid for it, probably a dollar or less. And I sold this for $20. The buyer was all in for $27.66. The next item is this vintage, I'm sorry, it's a Paddington bear. It's a Kohl's Care. Kohl's Care is hit and miss. It's usually bread and butter, you guys, usually. Um, this came from a garage sale. I think I paid 50 cents for it. And I sold this for a best offer of $8.80. The buyer was all in for $15.78. It was a long tail item. The next item are these cake toppers or mini figures. You can use them for like counting and color, uh, uh, like matching the colors up. Like kids can play with them. And I got these at a thrift store for 50 cents. They sold for $18 and the buyer was all in for $26.33. And maybe just maybe somebody's using these like for an Easter project or something like that. The next item that sold is these uh, nano speed cars. They're miniature pullback cars. Uh, I got these at a garage sale for 50 cents and I sold them for $14 and 40 cents and the buyer was all in for 20 84. And these are really tiny. They're really mini. The next item is this vintage dollhouse Christmas tree untested. I had no way to test it. I ended up taking a best offer of $12 on this. The buyer was all in for $18.61. I got this at a garage sale and I'm sorry, it was like an estate sale, but it was a family run estate sale in a huge box of vintage dollhouse stuff. The next item are these GC Grand Champions Horse Lot set of five here. 
Um, I sold these for a best offer of $30 and the buyer was all in for 40. And I can't remember where I got those probably in a bulk lot somewhere at a garage sale or something. This is a clock you guys right here on its belly. It's all lit up. Um, I got this for a dollar it says, but I don't remember where I got it, but I sold it for $25 and 20 cents. If I remember correctly, this went internationally and I sold this for, um, the buyer was all in for 34 or 45. This is a Cabbage Patch Kids designer little outfit. And I got this at an estate sale for $1. The buyer um, paid $19 and they were all in for $25.80. Here's another one from the same estate sale. And cost of goods on this was probably $0.50. Cents. Sold it for $8.64 and the buyer was all in for $14.19. The next item is the SpongeBob SquarePants mini make a bob toy. So I don't know if it's like Mr. Potato Head where you add the pieces to it. It looks like it kind of. But um, I got this at a garage sale for a dollar and I sold it for $23.04. The buyer was all in for $32.88. The next item are these Cat's Meow Village Christmas pieces. These aren't very big, you guys. Let me see if I can get you uh, right here. So they're just small, small little pieces. And I ended up selling these for $31.99 and the buyer was all in for $41.60. These came out of a huge lot that I got at a garage sale of Cat's Meow items. Okay, here's some more of the connects. Remember how I told you it was really tedious sorting these? This is what I mean. Um, I ended up selling these for $11.52. The buyer was all in for $18.45. So do they sell? Yes. Is it more of a long tail item? Yes. Is it a lot of work? Yes. Will you make more money doing it this way if the item is not complete? Yes. So, but you got to look at your time versus how much you're going to make. So the next item I sold is this Transformers Optimus Prime action figure. And I sold this for $18. The buyer was all in for $23.34. And I got this at a thrift store for 50 cents. And this is what he turns into. The next item I sold are these vintage antique postcards. This was a super, super, super long tail item. Took forever to sell. I don't even remember where I got them or what I paid for them. I've had them that long. I uh, sold these for $16. The buyer was all in for $24.34. I will say that I made money because I probably had 50 cents in all of them, if that. But it did take a long time to sell. The good news is, is they don't take up much space. That's one thing great about like jewelry and small toys and postcards and stuff like that. If you have limited space, they're great for that, but you just may be waiting a little longer for the item to sell. This is a vintage Lady Ellen double strand necklace. I got this at a garage sale and I sold it for $12. The buyer was all in for $17.50. The next item is this long horn bull cow. So, um, this one also sold pretty quickly. I believe he's vintage, but not 100% sure. Got him in a box lot of toys like horses and farm animals. So I'm guessing I probably had a quarter, maybe 50 cents in him, maybe less. Um, it just depends how many items I ended up end up listing out of that box. Uh, sold him for 18. Buyer was all in for $24.96. It is Ertl or ERTL. -E they are signed on the bottom. These Victoria's Secret slippers came from a garage sale. I paid a dollar, I'm sorry, an estate sale. I paid a dollar for them. I also had them in red and I believe the red sold first and quicker, but they were new. And um, these are, I'm gonna call these pre-owned because they didn't have a tag or anything. And I sold these for $10.80. The buyer was all in for $17.70. All right, you guys, that was... 32 bread and butter bolos items you should be on the lookout for and again the long tail items it's up to you guys you know you have to look at your business model when you're searching solds and comps you can look at that sell through rate and decide is it something that you want to pick up or not i don't mind long tail items um i just let them sit until they sell but my business model is not everybody's business model so you have to do what works best for you um i had somebody post in my facebook group the other day they said my item's been listed for 30 days. What should I do with it? And I'm like, 30 days? I'm like, most of my items don't sell within 30 days. So I am definitely a long tail seller. I am not impatient, but I have probably close to 5,000 items listed. So I just list it and forget it. That is how I do it. Um, so 
I don't know. It's like 30 days. I'm like, leave it listed. Like just wait for the right buyer to come along. Like you have not given it enough time. I sell stuff all the time that's been listed for over a year. So that would be my answer. Leave it listed and wait for it to sell. Um, it's worth it to just get a store and just let your items sit if you're worried about going over the limit of free items and all of that. So if you're new here, that's what I do. Let me know down in the comments how long you keep your items. Do you donate them after so long or do you just keep them until they sell? All right, you guys, there's a whole bunch of links down there in the description. So check that out. Other places you can find me, um, coupons and stuff like that if you want to join different things. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. And I will see you with the next one. Thanks for watching.